Hello and welcome, Sean Allison here. Thank you very much for joining me here on my YouTube channel. Let's get into the weekly update of what occurred in the markets and more importantly, what we are looking for to make money this week. Well, let's have a quick look here at this heat map, which gives us an idea of what happened uh, just yesterday, one day performance. We saw AMD that was up 2.3%. That's been moving up strongly recently. Tesla had a very strong day in the markets. Uh, Pfizer continues to move higher uh, within the healthcare sector. So that's been very strong. But if you have a look over here at the financial sector, we can see that credit services, they were certainly weak, uh, along with the banks, uh, they were showing some weakness as well. Now, part of the reason for that, if we just go here to the the uh, chart, in fact, before I show you that, I'll show you this, bonds uh, making a move higher, right? Bonds moving higher, the yields falling. So, you know, that starts to put pressure on financial stocks. So one of the stocks that I am looking at is JP Morgan. Uh, do we have a left shoulder ahead and a right shoulder here? Is this a bit of a head and shoulders pattern uh, where we could see this stock move down to the 200? Uh, you know, that wouldn't surprise me. We're now using that 50-day moving average as a uh, resistance level. So we've got that larger head and shoulders, but then also a mini head and shoulders here as well. So, you know, this could start to form a bearish pattern here, uh, waiting for it to break the neckline and move down to the 200. Uh, that could certainly be on the cards and something that I'm watching going forward. But if we have a look at the other areas of the market, we're certainly still you know, moving higher. Uh, there's nothing particularly bearish about this chart right now. Uh, we know that we've been looking at this trend line going all the way back to March of 2020, uh, the lows there. And we are getting very close to that trend line, uh, but we are still respecting it at this point. Now, the first trading day of the month was actually yesterday. So what we do is we put a high and the low of yesterday, and that becomes the new opening range until when? The third Friday of the month. This gives us direction on the market. If the market is going to be bullish, if break above the upper line, bearish, breaking below the lower line, or staying in between the two, it would be neutral. So right now, this is obviously neutral. It was only set yesterday. We'll get a little further um, information, obviously, in today's session. But this lower line here at 4384.81 on the SPX, which is the best gauge of the US stock market, that's very important. If we were to break that and this trend line, uh, then we would start to get bearish. But we're not seeing that yet. Remember, trade what you see and not what you think. So that's something that's going on and something that we're watching. Uh, the NASDAQ is sort of uh, not really going up or down, right? Sort of just going a little sideways right now, not doing a whole lot. If we look here at the Dow Jones transports, there's certainly been bearish recently. Um, and if we have a look at this, we're certainly starting to see this index move lower right there's no doubt about that and you know when we look at this we the reason that we would look at the transports is because we normally see the transports move down prior to the other areas of the market moving down so prior to the market moving down it tends to lead the market by several weeks so now that we've started to see a downtrend in transports that could then flow over into other areas of the market and start to see this market move down. But I have to see it break the, the opening range low that I just spoke about on the SPX and that significant trend line. If I look at high yield bonds, which I've been speaking about for a while, we now are actually below that trend line. So we've actually broken significantly below that trend line in yesterday's price action. Uh, if we get another day's confirmation close below that, that's another bearish sign for the market. Junk bonds, which is the risk appetite of the market, which we can see uh, right here, that too has broken that significant trend line going back to uh, October. So we've broken that, we've broken the 50. If we get another confirmation day close with junk bonds, the risk appetite of the market, we could certainly see um, further downside. But uh, you know the bonds are already telling us there could be some downside here, but we're not seeing it, and the transports, but we're not seeing it yet in the overall market, which is the SPX. If we look at the Russell 2000, 
and probably looking at it uh, from this point of view, we can see that we have been in a sideways trading range for quite some time. Okay, we haven't broken that yet, but certainly doesn't look bullish. Okay, there's nothing terribly bullish about this. A lot of sideways action here. If this breaks down below this lower trend line, uh, that's another warning sign. So for me, looking at the economically sensitive Russell 2000 breaking below this lower trend line and the SPX breaking below its opening range and its trend line there uh, that we use to gauge the overall market, they're the real signs that I'm looking at for this market to fall. Uh, if we look at the relationship between lumber and gold, um, you know, lumber's, yes, it's had a, a move down and certainly not in an upward channel anymore, but it hasn't really sold off significantly since last time we spoke and we haven't seen gold uh, move higher yet. But if we do start to see gold moving higher and lumber selling off again, that's another warning sign that the market is likely to move down. However, saying all that, uh, it hasn't happened yet. So, you know, most of these indexes here are respecting their 21 EMAs. Uh, it looks like the S&P is certainly above its 21. The NASDAQ is. Russell 2000, uh, not really. That's certainly more neutral to bearish. Uh, certainly seeing bearishness in transports and the Dow Jones is in a trading range as well, just above its 21. So we are starting to see some cracks. I already spoke to you guys about the repo market and the reverse repo market where banks are not willing to lend money to each other. That's a problem. Uh, getting banks giving liquidity or cash back to the Federal Reserve. That's certainly another issue. Uh, there are some cracks going on uh, in the market, but we haven't seen that significant move down yet in the SPX, which would start to get me concerned. As far as economic news, we've got factory orders uh, today. Uh, petroleum status report will be obviously something uh, important for the energy sector. We'll be watching that. But really, it's jobless claims and the employment situation on Thursday and Friday that the market is really going to be paying attention to. So uh, look there for any sort of big divergences from what the analysts are expecting. The skew right now is still um, well above 135. Anything above 135, we're looking for the markets to move down, or at least the smart money is worried about a market crash. So uh, this is still very bearish at this point. Now, we are in the middle of earnings season, and uh, you know we need to keep that in mind as well. One particular stock which hasn't confirmed its earnings yet is Lulu. Uh, looks like it's going to be in early September. What I'm looking for here on Lulu, let me just... Uh, get this chart up here. So with Lulu, it's just broken above that 400 round number, which is obviously significant. It's done that before, but uh, I'm looking for this to continue its trend into earnings. Most stocks will continue its current trend into earnings. So if it's in an uptrend, like certainly Lulu is right now, uh, we, would we would expect to see that trend continue right up until the earnings report date, which should be in early um, early September. Okay, So we're going to set up a position on this. We're going to set up an out of the money vertical call debit spread on this, uh, where we sell the 420 by the 400. And um, this is looking like a very good trade. Now we're going to structure it with asymmetrical risk. Okay, So we've got a fixed limited downside that is um, only one third of the potential profit. So our potential profit is three times as big as our risk. Okay, now that's how you make money in the markets. All of your trades are set up where your R or your risk is as constant as you can get it around the same risk level. And you're then utilizing asymmetrical risk where your potential upside is at least twice or three times or more higher than the risk that you're taking in the trade. And that's exactly what we've got here with this trade. So seeing this um, you know, in a strong uptrend leading into earnings, I would expect that uptrend to continue. Uh, are we seeing a inverse head and shoulders here, which is a bullish pattern, right? Bit of a sideways inverse head and shoulders. Uh, certainly we could be seeing an inverse head and shoulders here on the hourly chart. So that's a bullish um, 
charting pattern as well. So uh, that's one of the positions that we are looking at right now. Um, and we will uh, set something up with that now. So that's definitely something we're looking at for this month. Now, you know, we know right now the banks, if we continue to see the yields or the bonds moving higher and the yields going down, uh, that's going to put pressure on the banks. If you start to see you know, banks like JP Morgan uh, breaking down. Um, and, you know, already I've shown you a large head and shoulders and a small head and shoulders here, which is very bearish. You start to see that break down um, and probably financials in general, that's another warning sign, right? It's already using that 50 day moving average as a, as a resistance level. So uh, nothing particularly bullish about that with financials. So keep an eye on that. There's some things for you to focus on. But for us right now, we're going to trade what we see and not what we think. Right now, we don't. We actually have a neutral um, opening range. Today's price action will help us enormously to know which direction the market's likely to go. You know the exact numbers to look at, and you know a particular stock that we are looking to make money from as well. Now, the last time we set up a trade like Lulu, we actually used uh, Apple, where uh, we exited right here just in fact, we let it expire just before the earnings report date. So we were looking for Apple to continue its trend up until the earnings report date. It actually finished above the 145 level that we needed it to finish above. And we made a 100% return on our money in 12 days. So we're setting up a, a very similar position with Lulu this time as well. So, you know, 100% return on risk, return on the amount of money that you risk. Uh, in 12 days is pretty amazing. So we're setting something up here with Lulu. It's a little bit longer uh, time frame than 12 days, but still a very comfortable uh, return in a short period of time, provided obviously it gets in this case above 420 with Lulu. So uh, that's another trade that we're getting into right now. I hope you found that useful. We'll talk to you again next week where we have a clear opening range and more direction in the market, but you all now know exactly what to look for and uh, make sure that you're prepared and you know the numbers where the market is either bullish or bearish. All right, my friends, thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you again next week. All the best and bye for now.